Welcome back to Life Enrichment with Hank Ballinger. Today we want to talk about how to improve your credit score. Now, for many people, when they go to the bank to get a loan, the bank is going to look at your credit history and your credit score. So you need to make sure that both of those are what the bank wants to see so that you can get that loan, whether it's a home or auto, or uh, maybe you're trying to buy real estate to start getting into uh, building wealth and to buy apartments or franchise restaurants or hotels, whatever you're gonna buy, the bank is gonna wanna make sure that your, your credit score and your credit history is where they need to be, and that's fair. And we're gonna talk about that here in just a bit, but uh, before we get into that, I'd like to say again, thanks to all those who watch. Uh, uh, if you can, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with others on Facebook. We would really appreciate it. And thanks for all those who do watch. Now, having a really low credit score is really tough if you go in to get a home loan or if you go in to buy some uh, real estate to, to maybe get into, uh, to start building wealth. When you go to the bank, they want to look at you and say, okay, this is a credit worthy person. If we give a loan to them to buy this piece of real estate, we're gonna get our money back with the interest. They're not gonna miss payments. They're not gonna be late. So that's kind of fair. And here's why that's fair. When you go to the bank, the banks will look at your credit score and your credit history. Now they use three organizations. They're called Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Now they will look these up. Some banks just use a specific one of those uh, three companies. Some use all. So uh, you gotta make sure that your credit history and your credit uh, score is above grade. Now, I just recently had an interview with a banker and he said uh, a lot of times what banks look for is around 720, but uh, I'm sorry, around 620. Anything over 620, they could loan. Now, if it's around 620, you're gonna have a higher interest rate, but anytime you go above 700, 730, 740, you're gonna get about the pristine interest rate, means it's gonna be much lower than those that have a 620 or a little higher uh, uh, interest rate. So you want that lower interest rate. It makes all the difference in the world, it really does. So. Uh, to try to get that, that better interest rate on your home or on your real estate, your income producing real estate, you want a lower uh, interest rate. It's gonna make a lot of difference in your payment and the amount of money that you're gonna cash flow. So you want that low interest rate. So these banks, it's fair that they look and they, they pull your credit history and your credit score. Now, why is this fair? Now, a lot of times you will go to the bank and you will say, okay, I'm gonna buy a $100,000 home. And how much will you loan on that? Generally, the banks will do about 80%. You might get some to go 85%, depending on your credit history and your credit score. Some of them may even go a little more, especially if it's your primary residence that you're trying to buy. They may go 90 or 95, depending on the bank and the time. Times, the, the, the economic times change what banks will do. You know, whereas a bank may have gone 95% one time on a home loan and you only had to come out of pocket with five, then depending on the economic times, they may only go 90 and you go 10 or they may only do 85 or 80. So depending on what they will do is how much you will have to come out of pocket. The better your score and your credit history, the less you will have to come out of pocket and the more the bank will give. Now, that's very fair since at least they're gonna do on most home loans, 80% LTV or loan to value. If it's a $100,000 home, they will go 80% of that or 80,000. They will give, uh, say somebody's selling you that house, they will pay that guy 80,000. You gotta come up with 20,000 or if they give him 85% or 85,000, you gotta give him 15,000. So it's fair that banks do that. Now, what would make someone have a bad credit score? Now, in America today, you would think that the most powerful nation on earth since the beginning of man, the most powerful nation, the, the, the best economic nation in the world, the, the most uh, uh, wealthy nation 
ever known to man, most people wouldn't have problems monetarily. But there are a lot of people in America that are upside down, meaning here is their expenses and here is their income. Their income is not near as much as their expenses. You can't live like that and get loans from a bank and build wealth. It's not going to happen. So here's what gets a lot of people in a lot of trouble when they're trying to build wealth. Maybe their house payment is too big. Now, I'm not saying anybody shouldn't have a house, but I'm saying if you got a big house and it's really big and that house payment, it is just eating you up to try and keep up with that. You know, you, you can't, you, you almost could work two jobs and still not hardly be able to make that house payment. That house payment may be too big. Maybe you need to downsize that house and that payment to where you can make that payment a little easier. You know, if you read the, read the book, The Millionaire Next Door, they will tell you that many people in these really big subdivisions, these really nice homes, a large percent of those people, I actually think they say around 80, 85% of those people shouldn't be there. They really can't afford the home that they're in. Not saying they're not making the payment. They shouldn't be making that payment because they're, they're tight as a banjo string. They're tight. They're, they're just living paycheck to paycheck. You don't want to live like that. That's tough. So a, a house payment that is way too big can sometimes make it to where you can't have a good credit score and a good credit history. Yeah, you got the house, but now the rest of your life while you're paying on that house, you're going to be under or real close to being just a week or two away from not making a payment. Large car payments. You know, a lot of people lease, a lot of people buy, but many times when they get that car, there it's also on a payment. Now, that's fine. That's up to the individual, how they live. It's just your money, your life, and that's fine. But that's, that's one of those areas you really need to think about. If you want to build wealth, a car payment or maybe two car payments that are too big and too much, it's really going to keep you down to where you can't build wealth. Now, let's say you're leasing or you're buying either one and that payment every single month, it just it, you grit your teeth trying to pay that payment. And you realize, man, if I make this payment, I'm not going to be able to make that payment. If I make uh, that payment over there, I'm not going to be able to make my car payment. That's too much. Maybe you need to downsize. Now, sometimes when you try to get out from under a car payment, let's say you paid $20,000 for a car. You put a little down on it and you still owe around 16000 But now you look at the blue book on that car and that car is only worth about 13000 But you owe about 16000 You may, to try to get out from under that payment, you may have to sell that car for thirteen, pay the, thir the other 3000 out of pocket to get out from under that and then go buy you a beater car with a really, really small payment. And I know a lot of people say, well, yeah, but then I'm going to have to pay to get, keep it fixed. Yes, but generally that is not as expensive as a huge car payment every year. Now, if maybe if you know how to work on cars, getting a beater car that you don't have to pay, have a big payment on is a really good thing for you. Buy you an old car that you can work on, doesn't have all the sensors, all the uh, electronic stuff on it. One that's just kind of older and you can work on. Yeah, you're going to have to, but it will save you in the long run and you can build wealth while you're driving that beater. And then later on, you know, you do today what other people uh, won't. Tomorrow you'll be able to do what other people can't. Drive that beater and those big car payments that's keeping you broke or just right at the edge of broke, they will kill you. Student loan debt. I literally have heard of people that get a student loan and then they just keep going back to school because as long as they keep going back to school, they don't have to make those student loan payments. And I know that during the pandemic, the government said, okay, you don't have to make student loan payments. And I think just recently they've had to start making those payments. Now, I know the Biden administration is saying, and hey, we're going to pay those off. That's a bad idea. A bad idea. Whether you've got a student loan uh, debt or not, 
you, you never get somebody out from under a debt that they've accumulated on their, their own. You let them get out from under it. Then they will realize how tough it is and maybe not go into bad debt in the future. I'm not saying student loan is bad debt. What I'm saying is if it is keeping you poor and just barely above, keeping your head above water, it is a bad debt. At that point, you've really got to start thinking, how do I get out from under this student loan debt? And we're going to give you some illustrations here later how you can get out of all this debt. Uh, credit cards. Boy, there's a tough one, isn't it? Boy, we're good as Americans. We're good at swiping that credit card. Doesn't matter if it's Visa, MasterCard, Discover. Doesn't matter what it is or a different one. Doesn't matter. Boy, we're good at swiping that. Go to town, get some stuff, swipe the card. Go to another store, swipe the card. Go get some gas, swipe the card. Get some groceries, swipe the card. Go to the movies, swipe the card. We didn't pay for any of it. But we will next month and the next month and for many years after. So those credit cards and sometimes... If you miss one payment on a credit card, there are many times that that interest rate, you may have gotten a low introductory interest rate, but if you missed one payment or if you were late on one payment, they can go up to 23, 24, 28%, just like that. That can get expensive. And many times after we get one card maxed out, we get another card, then we get it maxed out, then we get another card. Some people, five, six, ten cards maxed out. Now, if we start becoming late on those payments and they all go up to 25%, my goodness, those payments get very expensive. So credit card debt is really keeping Americans to where they can't build wealth, and it destroys their credit, uh, uh, credit score and credit history. Extravagant vacations. Now, if you can't go on a vacation and pay that vacation off, and I'm not saying you can't put some stuff on a credit card, but here's the thing. When we go over here in a little bit, what we're going to say is when you have a credit card, you use that credit card as a tool. When you swipe that credit card, next month you pay that credit card off. You, you don't make that credit card like a pet to where every single month that thing is in your home and you're having to feed it with interest. It's not a pet. It's a tool. Use it like a tool and you can appreciate it. But if you kind of treat that thing like a pet, it'll be there consuming your money every single month for the rest of your life. So extravagant vacations is a, one of those places that if you really can't afford to pay for that vacation, maybe you can't afford to go on, on that vacation. Not trying to tell you how to live your life. I'm trying to teach you ways that possibly you could build wealth. So extravagant vacations, not saying you can't go on any vacation. I'm just saying those really extravagant ones that really cost where you got to get plane fare, you've got to get hotel accommodations, you've got to uh, uh, eat at fancy, nice restaurants. You, you've got several outings during that week or two of weeks of vacation. By the time you figure all this up and your gas and your eats and everything, you're out many, many thousands of dollars. If you can't afford that, don't do it. It's going to kill you in the long run. It's going to consume your wealth. Large lifestyles. You know, a lot of people, they like their really nice watches. They like their latest cell phone. They like their uh, wrist watch that syncs to their phone. They like their jewelry. They like their really nice cars. They like their big house. They like the lifestyle. But it's very interesting that many of these people, they're living right on the edge. Anything goes wrong and they're under. That is a tough way to live, and that will keep you to where you can't build wealth. So a large lifestyle, that happens. Too many toys. Now, let's say you, you're barely making it, but you look out in your garage, and you've got jet skis, you've got a boat, you've got motorcycles, you've got a side-by-side, -side, and that's not even counting your, your own personal cars that maybe you're, you're leasing or you have huge payments on, and they're the you know maybe a year old or maybe brand new. All these things will keep you very tight or even push you over the edge from time to time, make you start being late on payments. And then those interest, uh, those credit card interest rates are going up and maybe you get that car repoed or, or you know, it, it just starts a doom loop, a spiral that it's hard to get out of. It really does. Missed payments or stopped payments. 
when you're trying to get out of debt and you're trying to build wealth, those missed payments and those stopped payments, they're going to they're gonna get you. They're really going to come back. So all these things, and there's, there are others, but these are the major things. They're going to keep you broke. They're going to keep you right on the edge, and it's going to be hard to get ahead in life. So let's look at this side. How would someone clean up their credit score? Well, let's look at that. You may have to get a second job. Now, I know that's tough, and I know that's what exactly the opposite of what everybody would love to hear. Now, why is that? Because when we see on TV or in magazines, books, on, on your smartphone, you're, you see ads, and you see the wealthy people, oh, right in the middle of the day, they're out on the ocean, they're in a, uh, you know, a big yacht, or they're in a uh, Lamborghini, Bugatti, they're in a big, nice sports car, they're cruising, it's the middle of the day, or they're out at some club during the night, you know, they're just living it up day, night, they're just living it up all the time. You never see them at work. You never see them getting their hands dirty, but that's a false representation of most wealthy people. Most wealthy people don't live like that. Most don't. Because if you live like that for very long, you generally end up broke. So how can you clear up your credit score? You may have to get a second job. Now, why? Why might you have to get a second job? Let's say your house payment is too big. We're going to go over this list again, and we're going to see how you can clean this, this up and, and get yourself out of this constantly being behind on payments or being right at the edge to where you can't hardly get ahead. So let's say you have a house payment that's too big. Right now is still a great time to sell houses. Very good time. You could probably get the amount you need out of your house. Now, again, I have said this several times on this uh, uh, channel. Get good at four words. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. If you can't afford that big house, maybe you could sell it. You may even make a profit. Put that profit down on a smaller house, on a house payment that you can afford. If you're renting and you're renting a really nice A-type property, maybe you need to get out of that lease let that apartment go and get a C type. I wouldn't encourage really a D type, but I'm not discouraging it. You know, it's your life. You got to figure out how to build wealth. But you could get out of the A type property, maybe get a, a lesser rent. I'm not saying move into a bad area. I'm just saying get something that has a little less rent to it so that you can build wealth. You can put money back. Remember, now you have two jobs and you're starting to put money back, you're starting to pay, pay stuff off. So if you lessen your house payment or you lessen your high rent payment, maybe you're in one of the big cities, do you realize right now in America, the median rent across America right now is $2,035 a month. That's the median. That means there are some much higher than that to make 2035 the median. Now in Richmond, Kentucky, generally for a, a two bedroom, we rent about 850. So we're way below the median, but that's Richmond, Kentucky. That's not Chicago, Illinois, that's not uh, New York, that's not LA, it's not Florida. But it's fair and it's, it's a good market here in this area. So maybe you wanna look into maybe even moving if you can work from home. Maybe you're at a high area like a, a, a New York, Chicago, L.A. or something like that, maybe you can move to a, a place and you're working from home. You're still making the money, but you're working from home and your costs go down. That would be a good way to start building wealth. Uh, car payments. Again, we're, we talked about it a little bit a while ago. If you have a leased car or a, a car that you're making payments on and that car is way too much, you may have to let that car go. And if the value of the car is less than what you owe on it, you're going to have to come out of pocket to get rid of that car. And that sounds crazy, but in the long run, later on, you'll probably be glad you did that. Now, if you can about break even 
on that. If you owe 15,000 and you can get 15,000, let it go. Save a few hundred dollars before you do. Buy you a beater car, maybe a few thousand, whatever you have to, to get that old beater car that's gonna get you back and forth to work to those two jobs so that you can uh, keep your payments down. Those big house payments and big car payments really get a lot of people. Student loan, you cannot, even if you file bankruptcy, you can file bankruptcy on your house, on your cars, on your credit cards and stuff like that, but you cannot get out of student loan debts. If you have them, not right now, now if the Biden administration gets it to where people don't have to pay it back, well, that's between the, the Biden administration, the government, and that individual. I have nothing to do with that. But right now, that is not the case. So if you have student loan debt, you may file bankruptcy, but right now you cannot get out of that student loan debt. So again, get that second job. That may be one of those as you're looking at your debts to pay off, you get that one paid off pretty quick, if at all possible. Now let's look at another one, credit cards. Let's say you had five, okay? You take the one that you owe the least on and maybe double up on those payments. Remember, you're saving uh, m money from your house payments, your car payments. You double up on that smallest one. You pay it off. And then whatever you were paying on the other four, you continue to make those payments. But whatever you was paying on that lowest one, now put it to the next lowest one and add it to that and pay this, the next lowest one off. Then when you get that one paid off, everything you was paying on that second one, you're now paying on the third one. Then when you get that paid off, everything you was paying on that, those first three that you paid off, you put on the fourth one. You see how fast this is going to go by the time you get to that fifth one? You're going to pay it off and you're still making the same payments, but you're paying it off really quick and you're avoiding all that interest that you would be paying over time. Get those things paid down and off and get them out of your life. They're not a pet. Okay. So uh, extravagant vacations. Listen, if you can't afford it, if you can't afford to pay for that thing and it not run you short, don't go. They're going to keep you broke. They're going to keep it to where you can't control your life. They're going to make it tough on you. So extravagant vacations, just one of those things you probably don't need to do. A large lifestyle, you know, you don't need that, that latest and greatest cell phone. You don't need that watch that syncs to your cell phone. You don't need all that Bluetooth stuff. You don't need all that high tech stuff. You don't need the, the latest and greatest cell phone. Get that one that's a year or so old that is going to do the same thing. It's just cheaper when you get it. Okay. So you, you have to get control of your life and plan every th single aspect of money so that you're in control. If money controls you, money makes a bad master, but it makes a really good servant. So you have got to be the master and it's got to be the servant. Too many toys, you know, you can get rid of all those jet skis, that boat, that motorcycle. You can get rid of all that stuff. If you've got payments on all that, that's eating you up, get rid of all that stuff. And if you've got it paid for, you can get rid of it and take that money and start paying those credit cards off and get out of debt. That debt will eat you up. Missed payments. From now on, you set a goal and say, from this point, I'm not missing payments. I'm not going to be late. I'm going to work on this. Why? Because you've got to get this credit score up. If you want to borrow money from the bank, you've got to look good when you go into that bank so that they realize this person's a good, they may look at your past and say, you know what? You missed several back then, but man, you know what? The last three or four years, you've been killing this thing. You've been paying this stuff off. You've been really wearing this thing out. Yeah, you, you know, you're going the right direction. They'll probably be willing to, to make a loan to you because they're going to see what you've been doing. Now, I realize this is tough. This is tough. When I tell people how to get out of debt, it's tough. And I realize it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be no fun. Don't go to the movies. You know, you can't afford it if you're, if you're strapped, if you're broke. If you're constantly worried about how you're going to pay those bills, don't go to the movies. Those things are pricey. Uh, so you've got to learn how to manage the money and how to control it. Now, once you start getting control of your finances, stay in control. Now, how many people have you ever seen go on a diet? I'm one of them. They lose a bunch of weight, and then the next thing you know, they've got it back. 
And then maybe they'll find another diet and they'll lose weight and then they gain it back. That happens all the time. Again, I'm one of those. That's hard. I love to eat. I hate dieting. But when it comes to money, it's very similar. You've got to be disciplined. And once you get those payments down and you get out of debt and then you start uh, building wealth, it's that same discipline that gets you out of debt. It's that same discipline that can build your wealth. So once you get out of debt and you get control of your finances, you stay in control. Why? Last point here. If you want to build wealth after getting control of your finances, you must, you must always stay in control. Your income is always way above your expenses. Not a little bit, way above. You keep your income way above your expenses. Stay in control because even if you build wealth and you start buying real estate, it's real easy after you get some money coming in, especially if you got 10, 20, 30,000 a month coming in, it's real easy then to say, hey, I can spend that. And then the next thing you know, you're right back in the same position. You've got all these things that's going to keep you broke or make you broke. Once you get in control, stay in control. You can get control of your monetary life. Sometimes it's not easy. But anybody can do it. You can do it. You can become Redneck Rich. See you on the next video. Thank you.